church, would you stand and join us in worship to the only one who holds all power, all authority.
something upon which everything in our life depends on. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Oh, Lord, we thank you.
together in the house of the Lord. We're gathering as the family. Yeah, we're the family of Eastridge, but even more important than that, we're the family of God. And I just want to welcome you. Some of you today are here for the very first time. We just want to welcome you. We want you to know that it's an answer to prayer to have you here. And this is a house that um, puts a very high priority on having a relationship with God and having a great relationship with each other. So we want to welcome you today and thank you for coming and being a part of this great family. And today, um, we're going to talk about this more as we go on, but this has been a very difficult week for all of us because on Monday, uh, I hate to break it to some of you, some of you have not heard this, but uh, most of you have, but on Monday, uh, Pastor Larry, our dear friend and our beloved pastor, uh, was quickly taken and uh, went to heaven on Monday. And so we have been uh, processing that, walking together. We've been mourning together. And yet God is our strength. God is our hope. And I'd like for us to just gather in a, just a spirit of praise today and, and gratitude to God for His goodness and His faithfulness. But let's also um, take time to allow the Lord's grace and His comfort to not be at an arm's length from us, but to come right where we need Him, right in our heart today how we trust in Jesus. Is there an amen today? We trust in the Lord. And the things we can't understand, the things we can't control, we trust in who He is and the goodness of God. Can I pray over you today? Would you just, if you feel free, if you feel comfortable, just lift your hands with me today and open wide your heart. And let's just call on the Lord's love and His comfort and His grace together today. Lord God, we just thank you that we can trust in you. We thank you, God, that in the things that we may not understand, the things that are painful to us and so hard for us to process, so deep, Lord God, in our lives, I, I pray, Lord, that you would come over your people in a very special way, that you would send, as you said, your Holy Spirit is our teacher and our guide, but you've also said that the Holy Spirit is our comforter and that you will lead us into all truth. So today, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome, somebody say it to the Lord today. We welcome your comfort. We welcome your presence. We seek you today that we would receive from you mercies in our time of need, that we would receive from you, dear God, encouragement, that you would give us strength even that we don't have in ourselves. And God, I pray that you would even stir our faith with a greater vision of what you're wanting to do in our lives right here, right now. And I pray, Lord God, that you would just bring that, that comfort, that blessing, that strength 
and use us this week, even as we go towards Good Friday, as we come to Resurrection Sunday. Lord, may we be your instruments, bringing hope and bringing encouragement, and bringing the message of Jesus into our families, our friends, and our community. God, be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know, uh, we're going to talk more, but I'd love for you just, I'm going to give you, you know, normally 60 seconds, but today, I, 75, how about that? And so you can just greet people, give them an extra hug today, and just, just let them know God loves you, and so do I. We love you. We're so glad you're here today. Welcome to the house of the living God. Bless you. Eastridge. I know some of you are taking more than that 75 seconds. That's okay. That's yeah. okay. It's what we need. We're so glad that you are here today. And uh, boy, today more than ever, we'd love to have you check in with us. Let yeah. us know you're here. Submit a prayer request. Let us know what's on your heart, how we can pray for you. Yes. Uh, give us a testimony of miracles that God's doing, because we believe God is at work even in hard times, right, especially yeah. in the hard times. We see it. So uh, you can scan this QR code or go to easterstoday.com slash check-in. Uh, that, that's just a great way for us to connect with you. And you, ask, you can ask a question, sign up for something right there. It's a great way to do that. And if you're new with us, we are glad you're here today. This is a great day for you to come and see what we are all about to the core because we are a family here at East Ridge Church. We are a family that loves each other and you are invited into that family. Uh, we have a gift for you out in the lobby in the atrium. You can grab that on your way out. It's Pastor Steve's new book and an East Ridge Church coffee mug. We'd love to have you pick that up on your way out today. And if you didn't know this already, we are one week away from Easter. Come on, somebody who's excited for Easter. Let's go. We got a lot of amazing things happening, not only Good Friday, Easter egg hunts, Easter services, but the big thing is we want you to what? Bring your peeps. peeps. Now, to add an extra layer to this, you probably don't know this, but that whole slogan was Pastor Larry's idea. Bring your peeps. He sits on our creative team. He says he never brings any creative thought to the team. That was his one thing that he <laughs> said he brought to the table, an idea we grabbed onto. I think it's a great idea. Great. And I think there's no better way for us to honor Pastor Larry this Easter than for us to take that to heart. That's right. And to think about the people that we can bring to come hear the message of Jesus. Good Friday, this night is all about the story of the cross, the road to the cross, what Jesus endured for us. Saturday morning, incredible Easter egg hunts for your neighbors, friends, thousands of people are gonna be packing this campus on Saturday morning. In fact, we still have a few more spots where we need volunteers, we need your help. So if you can carve out a little bit of time on your Saturday morning, maybe come to one Easter egg hunt, serve at another one, we could absolutely use you. You can go to letsdothis.church or you can stop by the booth in the lobby. We'd love to hear more about you getting involved. And then Saturday night and Sunday morning, those are our, sun, or our weekend Easter services. A lot happening. Grab as many of these touch cards on your way out the door as you need. And let's bring some peeps this Easter and let's honor Pastor Larry in that special way. That's right. And we want you here at Easter Church to grow in community. Yeah. And I know Pastor Steve gave an extra 15 seconds for you to <laughs> shake hands with those nearby. But you yeah. know what? 
it's still not quite enough, That's right. right? It doesn't yeah. end there. What we want you to do is to connect in a group where you can meet people, connect with people, and grow spiritually in community. On your way in today, we, I hope you grabbed one of these uh, spring group catalogs. If not, you can grab it on the way out. This highlights all the opportunities that you can connect with this spring. So look through that, or if you don't have it, you can go to easterstaday.com slash groups yeah. and plug in. You won't regret it. That's right. Community is what we're built for, and it will really help you grow in your faith, grow in your life, and grow in the things that are important to you. And if you're not sure where to start, let me recommend Alpha. Yeah. Alpha is a great place to start for anybody who's wondering, how do I grow in community? And we're going to tell you a little bit more about it right now. Welcome to Eastridge. Thank you so much for joining us here today. It is our desire that every person would discover Jesus, grow in community, find their purpose, and change the world. And a great way to start on that discipleship pathway is the Eastridge mobile app. On the app, you can listen to past sermons, see upcoming events, join a life group, and easily give online with the click of a button. You can even set up recurring giving so that even if you're away, you don't miss out on the opportunity to be a part of what God is doing at Eastridge Church. You can also give online at eastridgetoday.com slash give or at the buckets in the back of the worship center. Stay up to date with everything we have going on here at Eastridge on that app, through social media, or on eastridgetoday.com. And once again, thank you for joining us. Such a, a great thing today to be with you. I'm so glad. And uh, can we give a big shout out? We got people all over the place worshiping with us every week online. Can we give them just a big shout out as a part of the Eastridge family? Some of them are traveling. Others are in different countries. And so you can even just put a, a message in the chat as we go on today. And I know it'll be a great thing. You know, my wife last night when we were in church, she, was, uh, she said to me, uh, are you going to share with everybody where we are, what happened with Inspire? And it was the strangest thing because when she said that to me, for those of you who are new to us, Inspire was last week. And we had on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, our Inspire uh, Miracle Sunday and raising funds to make our church completely debt free. But when she said that to me, it seemed in my mind that last week was about three years ago. And, uh, you know, there's just been such a, uh, we've all been walking through this, but, um, but I do need to tell you, are, you, are you ready for good news? You want some good news? And, um, <laughs> you know, we have come so far, you know, we've come so far, I won't go into all of it, but uh, just an amazing thing. Pastor Ray Johnston, who was here with us uh, last week, called me this morning, and the first thing was he wanted to pray for me. And, uh, you know, he... Um, he just really felt a bond with Pastor Larry right off of the bat. They had just a couple of days together when, he, when Pastor Ray was with us last year and, and a couple of days when we were doing the Inspire Week. In fact, the, the uh, reality is the last time that I physically saw Pastor Larry was after church last Sunday. And we took Pastor Ray with our wives and we went to, to a quick lunch and Pastor Ray had to get on an airplane and fly. And... Uh, but just out of that short time, there's been such a bond that uh, Pastor Ray uh, told me that he is uh, committed to a speaking engagement and he is um, working to move that. We're going to have a memorial for Pastor Larry on April 20th. It's a Saturday at 11 a.m. And even Pastor Ray was saying, I'm going to try and change my schedule so I can come and be a part of that. And, uh, and then he just prayed for me and prayed for you today. And then he was like, how did we do last week? And uh, wanted to know where we came in. 
And God has just done such a work in our church the last few years that as we talked to you about last week, we came in where we needed about $1.8 million to just be completely debt-free on all of our campuses and, and everything that we're doing. And um, we uh, took in, now we're looking for that in immediate cash that could be given as people uh, would feel prompted, but also some pledges, you know, these pledge cards, you even see them in the chair backs. And um, so we took in $720,000 last weekend in, in gifts, which, you, you, let me say that again for you. We took in $720,000 last week. And, uh, and, and um, hundreds of thousands in, in pledges where you're saying, we're going to do this in the next few months as soon as we can. And so we came up just a little short. I think as coming into today, uh, we had about a $300,000, whether cash or a commitment, that would completely take care of that. And uh, I know some of you were traveling last week, or you might not have been aware. You might have brought something with you even. But I want to encourage you. We've always got room. How many know we've always got room uh, to just, you know, not only finish this, but one thing I, I've planted in you all the way through, and that is it's a phenomenal thing to be in a place of being debt-free. Pastor Ray said to me today, he travels all over the country, and, and he said, you know, uh, for a church the size, the magnitude of, of Eastridge, um, he goes, I don't know anybody in the country that has done the things that you have done and are in this place. So God has brought us, can you say it? He's brought us a long way. And uh, so if you feel the tug of God and you want to be a part of that, then uh, we just welcome that. It's, it's always between you and what the Lord would prompt in your heart. But if you want, you can grab one of these out of the chair backs or in all of your um, areas on the platform as we give our tithe and our offerings today. Um, you, can, you can put that in uh, at the mobile app or eastridgetoday.com as you just heard Pastor uh, Dan and Savannah talking about. But uh, let's just keep pressing in, amen. Let's honor God. We're gonna hear about this in one minute when we start this message, giving God our best, living, living for the glory of God. And so I wanna thank you for your love, your generosity, your faithfulness. And I want you to know that we're praying for and we're believing God for you in every aspect of your life, walking together for the glory of God. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this amazing family. I thank you, Lord, for the faith. I thank you for their expressions of love, for Pastor Larry's family, for our team, for this great church. And Lord, I pray that you will knit us together. Somebody pray with me. Lord, knit us together closer and stronger and bolder, more visionary than ever before. May our hope be in Jesus. May our focus be upon you, Lord, and what is honoring and pleasing to you, God. Lord, I pray that today, uh, even in the preaching of the word now, you will bring the word. I pray, God, you would help me to communicate your heart to the people. And I ask, God, for your, the fruit of the kingdom that today would be a mighty day in the heart of this church family and the things you want to do in us, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, thank you again for just your love and your faithfulness. It's, it's an amazing thing. If you're, if you're taking notes today, the, the theme and the title of my message today is In the Twinkling of an Eye. And it's so amazing. I know that we as pastors and as leaders we kind of get an inside uh, view of things greater than, than others because, you know, we are in a place where planning out what we're going to preach over a period of time, what the themes are going to be, the things we're going to focus on, who's going to preach what sermon where, all of those things. But there's times where you, you just have to stand back and, you know, it happens over and over and over again. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, but you stand back and you go, wow, wow. How amazing is the timing of God that he would have us right here in the scripture. He would have us focusing on these things because he knows where we're at and he knows where we're going. And you just think about this. And from the day one of 2024, we've been in a series until just last week was Pastor Ray preaching our Miracle Sunday. But the week before, we were concluding 
a series out of the book of Daniel, and we entitled it Unwavering Faith. And we were studying Daniel and how even when life comes and seemingly uproots you and takes you to a place you would have never chosen to go or to be, God has a way of letting his kingdom come and his will be done in those things that sometimes we don't fully understand the why or the how. And there are things that are, boy, could there be any moment that was more out of their control than Daniel and his friends being uprooted out of Jerusalem and taken 800 miles away to Babylon and be placed in a different culture, have to learn the language and live in the midst of the immorality and everything that was around them, tearing down, trying to fight against who they were as the people of God. The Lord knew what we needed to hear for weeks, planting in us over and over, unwavering faith, No matter what the world brings, no matter what life brings, no matter how it looks or feels or things that that are just out of your control, trust God, stand firm, believe the Lord. And then as we watched Daniel standing strong, we saw God working in him. We saw God giving him favor even in their regime change when a different king would come in and would destroy everything else. Daniel was still given prominence and influence. I mean, it's unbelievable. And yet it even goes beyond that because the Lord gave Daniel the visions and the dreams that would even unfold telling the mysteries of the kingdom of God that would even stretch all the way to the end times. And we were talking just two weeks ago about that period of what is known as the tribulation period, a seven-year period of tribulation. We were talking about the aspects of, of even what would happen, we would believe, before that tribulation, that there would be a catching away, a rapture of the family of God, the believers in Jesus. All of these things coming to this point where God knew what was going to happen next in our agenda and in our lives. Isn't it pretty amazing? Listen to what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Today, if I'm preaching truth to you, you can, uh, you can give an amen here or there. Are you with me? These are difficult days that we're in, but we're walking to God's victory together. Look at these words, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. It's talking about um, this aspect. I declare to you, brothers, this is the words of the Apostle Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Excuse me nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye. At that last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. Come on, somebody. But thanks be to God. He is the victory. He is our victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Look what this scripture continues with. Therefore, obviously the word therefore is that connector because of all the things we just talked about, that the, that the perishable cannot inherit the imperishable. The, the areas of the mortal can't live in the place of the, of the immortal. There's got to be a a transition. There's got to be a change. And that change is going to come in the twinkling of an eye. Now, some people would interpret the Bible and believe that this would be the rapture that we're talking about. Other people may have a different interpretation and think that it comes at the end of the tribulation. But it doesn't really matter, does it? The real teaching, the real essence of what the Bible is teaching is that there is a transformation that happens when a human being is taken for the glory of God. When eternity touches our lives, the things that are perishable become imperishable. The things that are mortal are overtaken by the things that are immortal. Isn't that amazing? 
And so that's where this connection, this therefore comes into the picture. And it says this, therefore, because of all of that, therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Some of us, we've, we've been coming through and we've been dealing with these areas of just anguish and pain. And I bumped into people today that this was the first word that they had about the loss of Pastor Larry and crumble in your arms because I have to tell you something. Two things. One is, if someone has a loved one that dies, the rest of the family of, of Eastridge, the family of God, surrounds that family. And we share their burden and we love them and we do everything we can from taking meals to showing up and walking through things with them and making sure they're just not by, is it true or not? We help walk them through. But you know what's happening right now is so different and it's why we need to talk about it. Because we have, we have experienced this corporately. We are a family. And it, it's one of the most beautiful things. It's the strength of this church is, is our, it, what we even talk about. We preach about it. We write about it. It's the sacred trust that a pastor is called to have a dynamic living relationship with God and love the Lord with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. But you're also to love your neighbors yourself. In our case, it's to love our people and our neighbors. We are to have a heart for our church. We're to walk with them and stand with them and believe with them. But on the other side of that sacred trust, is for every believer to have that dynamite relationship, that dynamic work of God, loving God, surrendering ourselves to God, and loving Him with all of our heart. But also, in turn, loving the work of God through His body, and even loving your pastors and your leaders. And it's that bond of trust. It's that bond of the Spirit. It's that bond of the kingdom that shapes our lives. And that's the reason why this pain is corporately deeper than for some of you things you've ever experienced in your life thus far. But I want you to know that it's because of good that the pain is so strong. It's because you have had the opportunity to walk with someone who had godly character, who had a heart not just for themselves but for you who carried burdens with you, who prayed, who loved, who smiled, who greeted, cheered you on. Because you have been deeply loved, there's a deep void. Because you've been deeply loved and deeply cared for, there's a deeper pain. And that's why we need to talk about these things. That's why we need to understand these things. It's why we need to process these things. Because if we, just, if we just push this under the carpet and act like nothing happened, and we just say to each other, well, you know, he's in a better place. We're going to miss what God really intends. Because you know something the Bible teaches us in Psalm 116, verse 15, that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. It's not easy. It's not haphazard. It's not small. But it's one of the most powerful things. What the Bible teaches us is that there is this miracle. God made you. He dreamed of you. He had a purpose before you were even physically born. He said to Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you. I set you apart. I made you a prophet to the nations. I want you to know God loves you. God cares for you. God fashioned you in his heart, in his mind. He made you unique and, and, and so powerful. And he loves you from the inside out. You know, the things we need to understand that even in these difficult moments and pain-filled moments is that they reveal to us the things that are most important. You know, where the Bible talks about Jesus, one of his other names is Emmanuel, which means God with us. Not God way out there somewhere, but God right here, right in our needs, right in our walk. But I want you to see this incredible moment. This is so powerful to get our hearts and our heads wrapped around. Because what the Bible says here is that there is a moment, it's going to come like the twinkling of an eye. You know, I... So I was sharing with you, Pastor Larry went golfing that day, went with, with Pastor Josh and Pastor Dalton. I wish I could have gone with them. Larry's always a hard guy to keep up with on a golf course. But one of the funnest guys out there. He golfed with them. He felt nauseated at the end, told them that he felt like maybe he might be getting sick. But then he, he felt better. He went and caught a little bit of lunch. The only way that I know that was later that day I would drive his car home. There was a cup in the 
cup holder. There was a little bit of pink lemonade still there because there was something that happened in the twinkling of an eye. He came back from that lunch and he went in his office, just going to go about his day. Might have been thinking about calling you for all I know. And yet in that moment, the Lord had a plan. You know, what I want you to see is so often we just know, we just look at the pain. We look at how tragic it is. It's like, oh, how could that have happened? Why? I don't understand. Vibrant, young, got so much more life. He's, and we measure it through our lens instead of God's lens. I want you to always remember this. God's love for you is so great that he has put in his book the numbers of your day. So whether it be because of a sickness or because of an accident or because of anything else, we need to realize that our lives are in the palm of God's hand and no one else's. And we need to trust the goodness of God. We need to trust him in the things. Oh, how sweet it is to trust in Jesus, right? In the things that we wouldn't want, we wouldn't sign up for, we don't understand, we don't like. We have to trust him through that. I come to this scripture and I think about the twinkling of an eye and I think about how the Bible says that the death of a saint is precious in the heart of God. I think the Lord has a plan. He has a way. You know, he can send an angel to open up the door of heaven and bring you in or maybe Jesus might even just come himself to get you. I mean, could you imagine, what does the scripture say? That the, the mortal cannot go into the place of the immortal. The, the flesh, the body can't go into that space. Could you imagine if Jesus, there were, nobody was there, nobody saw it, there was nobody on our staff was in that room. But what, what if it was just the voice of Jesus, maybe the presence of Jesus? And what if, what if it was different than Buddy saying, hey, let's, let's go play golf? Well, when they were done playing golf, what if, what if the Lord just said, P. Larry, come with me? And boom! In the twinkling of an eye, the things of the flesh, the things of mortality could not stand anymore because of who was calling and where he was going. Even that, that, that medical examiner told us that Pastor Larry did not suffer, that he had such a, a, a place of everything stopping that he was probably in heaven before his body even touched the ground. In the twinkling of an eye. Can you think about that? In the twinkling of the eye, the perishable becomes imperishable. The mortal becomes immortal. The things that are limited become unlimited. The dreams and the plans that God has, the presence of the Lord is experienced in a way that you and I can't even imagine. The Bible says that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has for those who love him. And in our pain, we somehow limit what God is doing in this moment. One of our people in the church said to me the other night, well, you know, Pastor Larry, here we are mourning, but Pastor Larry is exactly where we all want to be. Can you remind yourself of that? He's got the end goal. Wow. The twinkling of an eye. Do you know that's going to happen? That's a reality. Every one of us are going to face that moment, whether it be at the rapture the, or whether it be at the moment when, when God's days in his book for us. Are you with me today? There is this place of life and death. There's this place of the eternal. I got to ask you this question. Is your heart right with God? These are important moments to, to let the Lord do a scan on your heart and your soul. Are you really living for God or are you so busy living for everything else? Are you serving God? Are you loving God? Are you calling on God? Are you depending upon God? Or is it just like, well, where I have a crisis here or a crisis there and I call on him in those. Listen, God wants you to know that he is the Lord of your life and wants to walk with you and talk with you and fill you and anoint you. But you know, there's, there's something else that I, wanted, I want to talk to you about today. Because it, there is something about mourning a loss and doing it through the presence of God that changes everything. In fact, in 1 Thessalonians 4, the apostle Paul said to the people, I want you to know, and he's talking to them about, about heaven. 
And he's saying, because we do not sorrow as people who have no hope. So God wants us to have a different perspective. Look at somebody next to you and just say, in the twinkling of an eye. God wants us to have a different perspective. He wants us to understand that he is in control, right? That we don't sorrow like people who have no hope, but we live because of who God is. You know, and listen, let me say, can I read this scripture for you one more time? In 1 Corinthians 15, it says, Therefore, dear brothers, stand firm. Listen to this. Let nothing move you. In the midst of our grief, there's vulnerabilities. In the midst of our pain and our grief, we need to know where to go. And I want you to see this. We need to be people who do not grieve like others because they have no hope. We need to come to where our hope is. And we need to access the grace of God. We need to access the truth of God. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, this can be true for women too, but it's particularly true for men. There's this place that, you know, we take on that, um, you know, that in our masculinity or in our manhood, that, that we shouldn't show our emotions or we shouldn't drop a tear or we shouldn't do those things. You guys know my story. I mean, I, I grew up among a bunch of tough guys. And when you've been around tough guys, you understand there's a big difference between a tough guy and a strong man. Those are two separate things. A strong man has the strength to stand with you, cover you, walk with you, bring strength to you. And the strongest men are men who know the things of God and draw their strength from God. And I, I want you to see that. And there's that place of being rock solid. There's that, pr- that place of being a warrior, yes. But you know what else? In your life, there's got to be the place to be able to express your humanity, express compassion, to give people the love that they need in the moment. That, is it true or not? And the same thing is true with women. This is not a, a man thing today. This is a humanity thing, that we would open our hearts, that we would not diminish things, that we would not just say, well, let's compartmentalize that. Let's put that back. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with that pain or we'll deal with those thoughts some other time. We need to deal with it right now. And we need to really deal with it properly. And I, I want you to see this. Jesus was the one that in, in the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, he is the one that said, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. In other words, if you and I don't open our hearts, and if we don't have an understanding, we're going through something, and we have to process this, we have to, we have to learn we have to talk with people. We need to not bottle up things. We need to speak. We, one of the best therapeutic things you can do when you've lost someone in your life is to sit around with friends and talk about the blessing. Talk about what you admired, what was great, funny things, all those different things. It's therapeutic. It's helpful to pray one for another, to share with each other. It may be that you should find even a Christian counselor that can help you take another level. Talk to one of our pastors. Be a part of even our life groups. There there is biblical therapy that happens with the gathering of the people of God, whether it be in a home or whether it be inside the church. Is there an amen today? Those of you who are even online, put it in the chat box today. You can talk. There's a fellowship that's out there even online. Don't miss what God is trying to do. In the midst of this, though, I want, I want you to see these things. In, in um, Psalm 34, verse 18, it says, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. God is not far from you in your pain. You know, the other thing that's so amazing about the Scripture is that it talks about God's comfort. I want to take you to a really important Scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and uh, verse 3 and 4. Here's what it says. This Scripture is going to talk about how, com- how we need to properly process mourning and hurt and grief. Because it not only helps us, it gives us the power to help somebody else. Listen to these words. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. You know, our God is the real source of true comfort in a human heart. God can come near to you. It may be through your tears. It may be through these other things. It could be through your worship. How, how to best mourn, how to best grow. 
Get into the Word. Let the Word speak to you just like this. God is near to the broken heart. You know, the Bible says in Romans 12, 15, it says to rejoice with those who rejoice, but to mourn with those who mourn. In other words, we are to be connected with people. We are to care. We are to carry burdens. We're to share life. Oh, I wish I could get an amen right there. We're to share life and strengthen each other. But look where the strength comes from. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. You know, we're not just talking about the death of a friend. In the midst of troubles today, you may be here with a financial crisis. You, you may be here today with a relational issue. And it could be in a, a marriage. It could be with, with your kids. It could be so many different things that we're journeying through. And life is bringing us pain. Or what you would even say, I've got trouble in my heart. I've got pain in my soul. You know, the comfort comes from the same place. It comes from our God who loves us, who knows us, who cares for us, who even reveals himself to us as God, Emmanuel, right here with us. And look what this scripture says. He comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we ourselves have received. Some of these scriptures are going to be more real to you. You may have read these scriptures or heard them be preached, but boy, they're getting real right now, aren't they? The comfort that comes from God for any trouble, that not only you would receive the grace, but you could give that grace. Man. How good is our God? You know, I'm going to take you to um, John chapter 11. And while we're thinking about John chapter 11, I, I want to talk to you for a minute about Mark 2. For the sake of clarity, don't turn to Mark 2, okay? I'm just referencing Mark 2. And... You know, Larry was a great friend of missions and helped lead our, a lot of our mission trips and stuff. When I travel, and if I'm in different countries, and sometimes they say, you know, you're only going to speak one time to this group of people. So many times I will preach a message. I preach this message all over the world. And that is the message of Mark chapter 2. And it's the story of the paralytic. Do you remember this? where Jesus came back to his town that he, he ministered to, Capernaum, and there were four guys who ran off to get a friend who was a paralytic, couldn't walk on his own. And they carried him to that house, and when they got there, the house was full. So they went up on the roof, and they punched a hole in the roof, and they lowered this man down in front of Jesus. And all the skeptics and, and you know, Jewish leaders were there, and Jesus said, young man, your sins are forgiven. He didn't say anything about his feet. He talked to his soul. And the Bible says everybody there, those Jewish leaders who didn't believe in Jesus, they were like, blasphemy, blasphemy, because only God himself can forgive sins. And the Bible says that Jesus knew what they were thinking. And so he asked this question, what is easier, to say to this young man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But then he makes this most profound. Why do I preach this one more than any other? Because it's one of the most clear, maybe the most clear picture in the Scripture of the divinity of Jesus. Because Jesus basically says this, if this man's, if this, if this man's legs don't work, then I am not who I say that I am. I am not God. I am not your Savior. I'm not your Messiah. Talk about putting it all on the line. And then Jesus said, young man, I say to you, get up. And the young man stood up for the glory of God. That's a awesome. Because some people say, well, well, Jesus is just a man. Jesus is just a good moral figure, a good you know, moral teacher. No, Jesus is Messiah. Jesus is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He is God. So now I've already given it away by telling you to turn to John 11. But I was going to say to you, what would be the greatest, maybe the greatest demonstration of the humanity of Jesus. Lights are going on, right? John 11. So in John chapter 11, look what it says. In verse 1 and following, it says this. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, a village of Mary and her sister Martha. 
This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her tears. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. So there was an incredible bond. You know, Jesus had an incredible relationship with Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus. And Lazarus is sick, and they're calling on Jesus. Jesus, come and help us in our time of need. That's what we've been doing today. And when Jesus heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed there for two more days. And then the Bible goes on. And it talks about how Jesus had a conversation with his disciples about Lazarus. Verse 11, after he said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. And many times in Scripture, falling asleep is uh, the equivalent of someone who has actually died. And so he says this, he has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Some of you have had that in your life. You're not feeling too good. You just, just give me a little bit of time. Just let me sleep a little bit. I'm going to bounce back. I'm going to be okay. But Jesus brings this incredible clarity. He says this. So the Bible says in verse 14, so he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas called Didymus said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go so that we may die with him. How about a positive guy in the crowd? Let's just go. We'll all just die together. Verse 17, on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been dead in a tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles. Can you imagine being two miles away? And yet Lazarus has died and has been buried for four days. And it says, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha had heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that now God will give you anything you ask. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, isn't this amazing? Sometimes in the midst of our hurt and our pain comes the greatest revelation of who Jesus really is. She's saying, I know someday at the great last day, you know, he's going to be resurrected. And what does Jesus say? I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God who has come into the world. And after that, she said, after she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and he's asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Listen to these words. Now Jesus had not entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to mourn. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews that had come along with her also weeping, He was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. And the Bible says in verse 35, the shortest sentence in the scripture, Jesus wept. What I want you to see in this picture of John chapter 11 is that Jesus knows the past, the present, and the future. Jesus knew that Lazarus was not just falling asleep, but that Lazarus was dead. He clearly spoke it to his disciples. And he even said to them, I'm glad I'm not there so that you could believe. And what he was saying is, by watching what I'm about to do, it will anchor your faith that you will know who I am. God works in our pain to bring us to a place of faith. 
God works in the things that we can't understand to bring us to the greatest understanding that you were made by God, for God. He's the author of your life. He's the finisher of your life. And the only way to salvation is through Jesus because he is the Lord. There's a revelation coming into many of your hearts, some of you today. The question is, are you really fully living for the glory of God? Remember the therefore, because of this twinkling of the eye and the things that God is going to do, the immortal coming and the imperishable taking, live your life fully, fully honoring God. Stand firm. Do not be moved. Come on, somebody. We talked about the paralytic coming through the roof as one of the greatest moments of the, div of the divinity of Jesus. But what about this heart of humanity? They came out, and those friends, those neighbors who'd been coming for four days and surrounding these, this family and trying to love them and help them. And when they saw her get up so quickly and bolt, they were like, oh, we, we better go with her. We, we better just stand by her. And they went out. And there was this gathering, and they were weeping, and they were broken. They were pouring out their grief. And think about this. Jesus, who knew the condition of Lazarus and even knew what he was about to do, there was the cross-section of humanity. There was the cross-section of real life, not just hyper-spirituality, but the real life of the real pain, the real hurt that humans have in their lives. And Jesus didn't just blow it off. He didn't just say, oh, he's in a better place. You know, when Jesus saw what was happening, his heart broke, and he wept. You know, Wednesday night, we had a service, and and, you know, people say to me, how are you doing? And the honest truth is I am moment by moment. Larry was my friend from college. And when we were youth pastors, we've raised our families together, our kids. We've, we've done the work of the ministry together. And the message of him, I, I was called. I was on the phone from our team. Heather called me, and she's like in total panic. Pastor Steve, Pastor Steve, I don't even know what's happening. She said, you've got to pray. Pastor Larry's unresponsive. And I could hear my daughter-in-law, Carrie, praying in the spirit. And I could hear the commotion of everything going on in that room. And I said, put the phone down to his ear. And I just prayed my heart out that God would touch our friend. But instead, Jesus had already been there. In the twinkling of an eye. And the mortal was already overtaken by the immortal. The perishable was already overwhelmed by the imperishable. Isn't that unbelievable? It's unbelievable. And in this moment, Wednesday night, I thought I was pretty good. I'd been up and down. I could be standing there and just solid as a rock. Two seconds later, you say something to me, and I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. I thought I was okay Wednesday night. I came out to love on you. I came out to greet you. And as I stood in the atrium and I watched this sea of Eastridge family coming through the doors, and I saw the shock and the anguish on your faces, it was like this intersection of humanity that Jesus, Jesus didn't stop in that moment and go, oh my gosh. Jesus let his heart be touched by the depth of that pain. Isn't it interesting that he didn't just bring the resurrection and go, it's all good. There's something about mourning. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 5, 4, blessed are you who mourn for you will be comforted. There's something about this journey. There's something about understanding the twinkling of the eye that calls us to live our life fully for the glory of God, to stand firm, to move to deeper ground. Is anybody still with me today? Some of you just need this. Remember, it's not just about the death of our, of our friend. The Bible talks about whatever your trouble is. God is the God of comfort, that he can comfort us, that we can give it to others. 
One of my friends, Jason Decker, was a part of our church, and he moved to the Bay Area. I was talking to him a couple days ago. Jason almost died during COVID. He was 27, 28 days on a ventilator. And you know, back in that time, you know, you think, okay, get on a ventilator, you're going to get better. But every day you're on a ventilator, your chance of recovery went down instead of up. Strange thing. 40-some days, 47, 48 days in the hospital, in ICU. Finally came out, had to basically learn life all over again. But he said to me, you know, when you go through that place, everything in your life gets sifted. And, and you start to see what is really most important. Isn't that what the Bible's trying to say about the twinkling of an eye? Live your life fully unto God. Unmoved, unshaken. Come on, somebody. You know, Jason talked about what do you, what do, you do when you come out of that place when really you come to the edge of that, that moment? You're right on the edge. And when, you, when God gives you grace to continue in, in this flesh and in this body, in this tent, he said, you have to make a decision. Is my career the most important thing? Or is it the love of my family, the love of my kids, the love of my... Are you with me? Should I be running so hard after those things that it's like sand going through my fingers? Or should I really be refocused and serve God fully, unmoved, unshaken for the glory of God? Talk to me about slowing life down, being present Understanding that life is such a fragile gift. Don't miss it right here, right now. Don't miss the times when you could stop and give somebody encouragement or listen to their story or care about them. Don't miss what could happen in the building of the depth and the, and the character and the quality of your own life because you learn what it is to have compassion. You learn what it is to unselfishly Give yourself that someone else might taste the goodness of God. Am I preaching truth to you today? Is it coming anywhere near close by to you today? What would God say to you? What, what is it that he's maybe trying to say to us today? Because God doesn't waste anything. He comes to speak, to build, and to challenge us, to use us for greater things. Is your heart right with God? Are you living fully for God? Is there one foot in, one foot out? Is there a place that wants to be obedient to God, but there's so much pull of disobedience that you're not sure where you're ending up even by the end of the same day? Or is there an unmovable place because you have given God your heart fully and you're trusting Him with your decisions? You're trusting Him to take care of your heart. You're trusting him to be the Lord of everything in your life, that you would really know what it is to serve God. I believe God wants to bring revival. We're walking in a dark day, a dark time, but you know who God uses? He wants to use his people. So we need to properly process our pain, but we also need to glean and be strengthened by the process to get our lives prioritized in such a way that we become a dynamic people filled with joy, filled with courage, filled with power and perspective for the glory of our God. Amazing things are ahead of us. Think about, I, I want to challenge you. I want you to think about, is there something God's prompting you? I want you to, I want you to grab a ton of these, okay? We got a bunch of these. If this doesn't get used this week, it's useless, okay? I, I want you to grab a ton of these. Put them in your pocket. Put them in your purse, your backpack, where did, wherever you go, and just start looking this week. Pray ahead of time. Say, Lord, I want, I want to live fully for you. I'll, I'll pray for opportunities. I can just even talk to somebody about what you're doing in my life, even through a difficult time. God, you're here for me. I don't want it to be torn in half. I want it to be used. You know what I'm saying? I'm just telling you, this is perishable, okay? If we don't use it this week, this is, this is meaningless. So grab a whole stack, pray about it, and I'll see you on Good Friday. Bring your friends. Do you realize that you have 
people in your life who if you just invited them, they would come. It's true. Easter is going to be amazing. Some of you may even want to come on Saturday night. Invite your friends. If they say, hey, it'd be easier Saturday, say, hey, I'm going to make it on Saturday. And just, but whether it's Saturday or whether it's Sunday, don't miss it. It's going to be one of the greatest moments. Can we come prayed up, ready, and fully serving the glory of God? Will you take a spiritual moment with me real quick? Today, would you close your eyes with me and would you, just, would you just ask God a question? God, am I right with you? If today was the day that you have for me, if today is the twinkling of the eye, if there's anything we learn from this moment with Pastor Larry is you can't predict what's gonna happen next. It's not on our time frame. It's not even on our knowledge. It's only in the hands of God. But are, are you right with God? That's the first thing. Second thing would be, are your priorities right with God? Are you really living fully as God would have you live? Or are you chasing things that are wood, hay, and stubble that really have no meaning in the bigger picture? Is this a moment to recalibrate where you're headed in your life? Let's go back to the first one. Have you made a decision to follow Jesus? If not, today would be a great day. How do, you, how do you receive Jesus? It's by faith. We're gonna talk about the cross, we're gonna talk about the resurrection, but it really boils down to this. Jesus made us, God made us, he loves us, and there's a chasm between us and God because of what we know as sin or rebellion in our hearts. And that's why Christ came into the earth and ultimately went to that cross, was to break the power of that rebellion and that sinful heart and give us forgiveness and cleansing and literally new life in Jesus. So I wanna ask you, have you received that? Or have you received him, but today you're far from him because of allowing some decisions and people or choices to get in the way between you and God? Today, while others are just thinking about that, if that's you, and today you would say, Pastor, I want to be right with God, whether it be a first time or a place of reconnection, I'd love for you to share it with me so I can pray with you right now. I'd love for you just to lift a hand and boldly do it. Say, Jesus, I believe that you're the Lord. I believe you are who you said you are. And I thank you that you're not only divine, but I thank you that you showed us your, your humanity and your heart, that I can know that you care about me, that you love me, that you're even broken. You would shed tears over what's happening in my life and want to bring me into you. So if that's you, let me see your hands. Okay, I see a number of hands going up from side to side. What about you? Is your heart right? If not, take that step right now. Just take that step. Let me pray with you right now, okay? Let's pray. Lord, you see the hands, young people and adults. I pray over each of them. Right now, you are doing something in their heart. You are speaking to them, and they know it. And so, God, as we yield and as we respond, I pray for that faith to a well up, and I pray, God, that you will indeed answer their prayer. Lord God, to forgive and to receive, to cleanse, and Lord God, to Begin to put your Holy Spirit upon them, to lead them and guide them and touch them in their lives. Lord God, may this be an amazing day as they discover how much you love them. I pray for it to be so real. God, they would just know that you have touched them today. You have spoken and you've done a great work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand.